Good evening. Good to see you here this Wednesday night. Let's all stand together. We'll sing together. There's power in the blood. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. We'll sing together all three verses now. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in in the blood, power in the blood, come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the land. Good singing tonight. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll continue on this evening. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless our service tonight, be with all the events going on across our property this evening. I pray that you'd be with Pastor Matt and the, and the youth uh, as they're having their teen hour tonight. I pray that you'd speak through him, through the preaching of your word. Be with Pastor Marco as he opens your word tonight in our Spanish ministry and preaches your word there. Uh, be with our kids club and all the uh, teachers there and all the work that's going into our children tonight. Be with all those in discipleship and meetings all across our property this evening. And then, Lord, speak to our hearts right here uh, from Pastor Miller. Give him the message you want us to hear tonight. Help us to be faithful hearers and, and uh, doers of your word. Help us to receive the word faithfully tonight. And we'll thank you, Lord, for all that you do now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. Very quickly, just a couple of quick announcements, and we'll continue on this evening. Don't forget, right at the end of the service tonight, we'll have a, a brief business meeting. And so that will be as soon as we dismiss. We'll have just a few minutes. If you're able to stick around for that, uh, we would appreciate you doing so. We've got to talk about our bus situation, and uh, we'll get into more details on that uh, at the end of the service. But we're looking forward to a great opportunity we have here uh, uh, to purchase a new bus for our church. So that'll be right at the end of the service tonight. And then, of course, this Sunday is Name Tag Sunday. We've been announcing that for the last few weeks. And so as you come into church on Sunday, if you're able to come a few minutes early, do that. We're going to have tables set up all across the property here with name tags. And if you don't put one on, we're going to put one on for you, okay? And so uh, please come on and, and write your name on there. And, uh, and we're going to take some time to try to help people in our church. If you don't meet everybody, at least meet somebody that you didn't already know. So we're going to do our best to try to help introduce our church members to other people within our church. And so we're looking forward to having a fun time with that on Sunday. If you have not yet downloaded the Church Center app and you are interested in having uh, access to our online directory, it's for members only, but be sure to download that app before Sunday and to help save time there if you are able to. If you have any problems with that, Please let us know. We'll be glad to help you with that. And then parents of kiddos, we have a WANA kicking off on, on Wednesday, September the 7th. And uh, we're looking forward to getting a new season of Awana started in just a few weeks. If you would like to help with Awana, if you'd like to be a part of the Awana ministry, uh, please sign your name on the list out here in the lobby. And uh, even if you've served before, you've been part of it in the past, if you've served for many years, regardless, please put your name on the list if you're planning to serve in our Awana ministry this fall. And we're looking forward to, uh, to kicking that off in just a few weeks. And I think that is the last announcement we have. Good. All right. Well, it's great to see everybody. Take God's word tonight and turn to Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, our business meeting in just a few minutes, and I think that'll be a, a much needed, a much needed uh, 
um, meeting of the minds tonight that as we as we move forward with that um, name tag Sunday we're gonna we're gonna have a time of fellowship we're gonna create some time uh, in between Sunday school and the service you give people time to get some refreshments coffee get to meet people and uh, we're gonna make sure that uh, the Lord has just brought so many new people to the church and um, you know and I I know this as a pastor okay I, I have the pastoral intuition on this but when you have a pastoral change in a church what always happens and it's not just at front range but what always happens in a church through a pastoral change if you're not careful you get two churches going at the same time you have all the dear people who've been here through the years who are patiently waiting on this new guy to figure out who he is and what his vision is and are we really thumbs up or thumbs down we're waiting them out and they're faithful and they've they've been invested for years and years and years with their prayer with their faithfulness with their tithes and offerings they've raised their children here they've done all these other things and this is home to them and uh, much more than just home it is it is their family and so i recognize that there are there is a massive um a group in our church that this was this was their church before all of us got here and we kind of invaded them but they don't have that spirit and i want to say to all of you that were here you don't have that spirit and i'm grateful for that but then you have another group and that's all the new people who've come for whatever reason and there's a bunch of them who don't know the other group and this group doesn't know that group and what happens is you can kind of have two churches existing under the same roof and we don't want that and I don't think we have that, but these are why days like this are important so that we all stay connected and we know each other and we have a heart for one another and we love each other and pray for each other and uh, we have a good relationship with one another. And, and like I said Sunday, we become the big gospel net here in Fort Collins. And you know what a net is? A net's a bunch of nothings tied together. Some of you might have missed that on Sunday, but a net is a bunch of nothings tied together. And that's all we are. And we're tied together by the Holy Spirit. Some of you are going to go home and think about that tonight. You're going to ponder on that. What did he mean by that? But you know what a net is. It's just a bunch of nothings tied together. And, um, and the Lord uses us for ministry. And so, uh, so name tag Sundays are important. And it'll be a blessing to, to uh, get to meet people. And I'm going, to ask, uh, I'm going to ask our name tag people when they get there, make sure we get our name on there, and then make sure we get how long we've been here. Um, put on there, 28 years, 28 minutes, whatever it is. You know, we, we, we had, uh, you know, we had, we had uh, over 400 in, in the Harmony building on Sunday and uh, about 540 something on the property here on Sunday for church. And um, it's just, it, there's a lot of new people and there's people that are getting saved. There's people who need to get saved. Um, there's people who have, uh, just been here a short time, people who've been here a long time, people who've been here for a short time that are good Christians, people who've been here for a long time that are good Christians, people who've short time that need to get saved, people who've been here for a long time and need to get saved. And we got them all. So anyway, uh, uh, you didn't laugh about that. That was supposed to be funny. Maybe it's true. We hit the, we, we hit the nail on the head. But anyway, these are great days and uh, just great, great time. Uh, I want to just say just quickly because we're in the we're in the first week of our school, uh, but we had a, we've had a great kickoff to school, a little over 170 enrolled this this semester. Um, great great spirit among the student body. We listen, we have we have kids from I'm not gonna, I'm not going to get all the countries, but from Korea, from Hong Kong, from Belgium, from Italy, from France, from Spain, from Germany uh, and Sweden and Sweden and I said Belgium I got Belgium I got Belgium but but eight eight different countries that I that I'm thinking off the top of my head and I just I've been praying this all week long Lord uh, what an opportunity to these kids to come and to see Christianity lived out to see Christ and to be saved and to be trained and then one day to go home with the gospel and uh, what, a, what an opportunity. And then I got to pray. I've been praying. You know, C, uh, CSU is over 34,000 enrolled this year. Um, uh, huge international numbers at CSU. 
And the mission field is right there. And God's given us opportunities to start getting inroads in there. And, and the, those doors are opening every day. And we are going to see, uh, man, we're just going to see so much fruit and ministry around the world. And um, my, I just, there is so much vision. I don't know. I, I'm just asking the Lord, Lord, help us to do it. Uh, give us give us wisdom and people and all the things that need to get done. And so I'm excited about it. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just thrilled that the Lord is working the way he's working. And, you know, the Lord's working in my heart uh, just as a Christian in these days. I've really been uh, I've really been uh, uh, under under a conviction in my own life about my personal walk with the Lord. And sometimes we get into routines, don't we? And the routine can can make the relationship. Routines are important, but the routine can kind of make the relationship uh, stagnant. And sometimes you got to shake up that routine. That's why not all, all change is bad change. Uh, sometimes you got to change some things to grow, right? Now there is some bad change, um, but uh, not all change is bad change. There is bad change. I just said that, but we want good. We want things that'll help us and stir us and. And uh, and keep us keep us fresh with the Lord. Let's look in our Bible, Psalm 128. Do you have God's precious word there? Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Psalm 128. And we've been in this for a little while, but uh, tonight we're going to be on on part four of protecting the spiritual health of our homes. If you haven't heard the other three, go back and listen to them. And we've we've talked about this summer. We've talked about protecting. Uh, Scott, how you doing, man? Good to see you guys. This is wonderful. Um, so, uh, so I won't embarrass them, but just wave your hand over there. I know this couple met them at camp um, down at Southland Christian Camp. The last few years, they've served as were you you were campers there at one point, right? And then counselors there, and uh, just served the Lord faithfully. Now married, out in Colorado, enjoying the beauty. And uh, man, we're glad you guys stopped in on Wednesday night. So it's good to see you. Uh, it's always, I, I love to see young people on fire for the Lord. And those two love the Lord. And uh, and they love each other too. And that's a good thing. And I hope you love Colorado. And God puts up, uh, maybe God puts camping in Colorado on your heart. I'm talking about Christian camping, not, not going out in a tent. Uh, but uh, anyway, but um, um I don't remember what I was saying, but I just I got interrupted over there. Uh, but I, I I read I read something the other day. Uh, somebody posed a question: Has the nuclear family bombed? And I thought, boy, that's a great question, isn't it? Has the nuclear family bombed? Well, I want to say in the society, yes, because it wasn't running by the terms that God had laid out for the family to run. And so we want to, you don't have to bomb. You can have the power. You can be a nuclear power plant in the nuclear family and have great power there if we do it God's way. And so we want to look at some things tonight. Psalm 128, look at this. A blessed is everyone. And notice that word blessed. I love that word blessed in, uh, in, in the Hebrew is happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy is the man. He's blessed. The blessing of God. Happy is the man that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his, the Lord's, ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be. Now watch this. And it shall be well with thee. Now mark, mark in your Bible there the word happy and well. That's happy and healthy, isn't it? Well is a, is a doctor term. That's a medical term to be well with you. It's a healthy word. Are you feeling well? I hope you get well. Hope things go well. That's a great word. But notice this man is happy and he's healthy. Now, why is that? Because in verse 1, he was holy. A man who fears the Lord and walks in God's ways is a man who's holy. A man that is holy will be a man that's happy. And a man who's holy and happy is a man who will most likely be healthy. That's God's plan for the man, by the way. That's God's plan for the man, that, you're, that God would sanctify you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, the whole being, spirit, soul, 
body, Second, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. That God would sanctify us as the whole person, our spirit. And notice, God doesn't start body, soul, spirit. God starts spirit, soul, body. Because God's plan is for us and our spirit to be holy, in our soul to be happy, and our body to be healthy. That's God's plan. And can I tell you that even when our old worn out bodies wear out and get sick and tired, you can still have a happy heart and a holy spirit. <laughs> Amen. And so, look, I, I'm just telling you, I've, I, I'm going to get into this tonight. But I've made a, I've, I'm making I'm making a promise to myself and to the Lord that, Lord, I want to grow old gracefully and happily. I do not want to be an old curmudgeon. Now, I know that my body's going to hurt and my body's going to ache, and I know that I'm going to have to take all kinds of medicines, but I don't want to sit around and just talk to my kids and my grandkids about what's going on with my body all the time, how regular I am and all those kind of things. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I want to talk to them about fun things, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about homemade happiness. How do we protect the spiritual uh, the spiritual part of our home. Well, one of the things that you do in the home and one of the protections of the home is happiness. Biblical happiness. I want, to see, I want you to see it tonight. Um, the home ought to be the dearest place on earth. It, not, it ought to be the nearest place to heaven. Now, just, just understand there's no perfect home. There's no conflict-free home. But the home is an institution ordained of God. How many of you would agree with that? It's an institution ordained of God. And God created the family, listen to this, God created the family to satisfy the deepest longing of our hearts. And he gave it to us as a means to give and to receive love. He gave us the home for us to receive love and to give love because the deepest needs of men's heart is to be loved and to have someone to love psychologists will tell you that, but God already knew that in the very beginning. That's how God made us. He also created the home to propagate the human race and to provide a safe and secure environment in which to nurture, to teach, and to love our children. That's, that's the biblical home. Now, I know that a lot of people get married for the ideal. They, they have this ideal in their mind. I want to get married for that ideal. Then that ideal becomes an ordeal. <laughs> And then they go looking for a new deal. And we don't want to do that. We want to, we want to, be, we want to be people who, who see the ideal, pursue the ideal. And even when it gets to become an ordeal, that we keep our eyes on the Lord who made the deal in the first place. And uh, he'll help us with it. It is God ordained as a unit that is related by marriage. It's related by blood. Or it's related by adoption. Aren't you glad where the Bible says he puts solitary, God takes the solitary and puts them into families? God's plan is for the family. It's for the family. Marriage is a lifetime covenant relationship. Some people say it's a commitment. It's not a commitment. It's a covenant. And it's not a covenant between a man and a woman. It's a covenant between that man and woman and God. It's a covenant that sometimes becomes severed Sometimes through the hardness of men's hearts, there can be a single parent home. But can I tell you something? If you're a single parent and you're in a single parent home, that's still a family. Because where, where there is a single parent and the kids might be fatherless or motherless, the Lord takes them up, the Bible says. And he moves in and he'll help in special ways. But the ideal family is described in Psalm 128. It's a family where God has a man who has a faithful walk with God. He's walking in the Lord in all, the, all his ways. He's had, he has a faithful walk. He has a fruitful work. He's eating of the fruit of his labor. He's a man that works and provides for his home. And he has a family worship. His wife is a growing vine. His children are growing olive plants. He's nurturing and grooming and trimming and husbandman. He's a husbandman in the home and he's bringing out a fruitful wife and, and children that are flourishing. He's bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, this is the ideal home, a man with a faithful walk, a man with a fruitful work, a man with family worship. 
And then he's a man that has future wealth. At the end of that, he sees the, the children's children and the good on Jerusalem. His family has contributed to the health of the nation collectively. Listen, the hope is not in the nation getting fixed so the homes can be happy. The hope is the happy home fixes the nation. That's the whole point. As the nation has gone down, you can, you can rest assured when the home, listen, it is as sure as day follows night, the devaluation and the, the dysfunctional family leads to the devaluation and dysfunctional nation. As day follows night, that's the way it works. And so the Lord says here that he wants us to have a happy home. Listen, let me just say this. Look, look, over, at, look over at Psalm 126, verse 2. Psalm 126, verse 2. Well, verse one, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Now, remember, Israel had been in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. And when God turned that captivity, they said, we were like somebody that dream, like pinch us. Is this true? Are we are we really going back to Jerusalem? Did they just let us go for free? And they're I mean, the king just signed the decree that we could go back. And they were like people that dreamed. And watch what happened. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. You know what? The heathen were saying that about the people of God. The people of God were so filled with laughter and so filled with singing, the people that were unsafe said, God has done great things for them. You know, you know one of the things, I'm just telling you right now, I'll take, I'll take a church filled with newer Christians who still have to slip out between Sunday school and church to get a smoke who still come to me and say, Pastor, I'm three weeks without a drink, who are filled with the joy of the Lord, then a church full of people who have every standard in the book and are a bunch of old dried up prunes. Those people will cause you more problems than the new converts. They, they always, the old grumpy Christians who have all the eyes dotted and the T's crossed, who sit back and just like, well, that ain't right, that ain't right, and I don't like that, we ain't never done like that before. The new Christians are walking in and like, wow, this is amazing. This is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this before. Now, we're going to get them out of the, we're going to get out of that. Hopefully, we're going to grow through that. But can I tell you something? If Israel, listen, if Israel could be so filled with joy going from Babylon back to destroy Jerusalem, how much more can we be filled with joy coming out of the bondage of Satan into his glorious light and a kingdom in which we do not have to rebuild? They were going back to a nation without a temple. We are a nation that is the temple. We're a peculiar people, a holy nation in which God lives in us. We, listen, we ought to be the most joyful people in the world. I was reading something today, and I, I spoke about it a little bit in our school chapel this morning. Peter and John are walking to the temple, and here's this man that's lame on the side of the road, been asking alms all his life. Over 40 years, he's been born crippled. That man, I can tell you, he's just outside the gate. He can't go in to see God. He watches people going in to worship God every day of his life. And you know what they give him? They give him their change. And you know what's happened to him? No change. And one day, Peter comes by, and the man just says, can I have an alm? And Peter said, look at us. Look at us. Get your head up here and look at us. And the Bible says specifically, I never saw this before. I just preached through Acts, preached this. But the Bible says specifically that the man looked up, expecting to receive something of them. And I thought, he had every right. He had every right to expect to get something from people who said they know God, from people who said that their sins are forgiven, from people who say that heaven is their home, who have a new heart, who have God dwelling in them. The world has a right to expect to get something from us other than, uh, I can't believe how bad the world is. I can't believe that you're in that condition. I was born this way. I need to be saved. I need to be born again. And Peter said, I don't have, you know, the guy's like expecting something. And then Peter's like, I don't have any money. Well, that was disappointing. <laughs> but what I do have, I'm going to give you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. 
And he got up and said, oh, that feels better. And then he went home and began to criticize. No, he walked and leaped. And all the Christians are like, should he be leaping? Is that, a, is that against the standards? Should we really leap? Yeah, we should leap. Okay, that's okay. It's okay to be happy about being healed. So it's, happy, it's okay to be happy about being saved. Here's the point. Here's the point. Israel just had their captivity turned, and God filled their mouth with laughter. It's interesting that they were going back home out of the nation to go back home as that people of Israel, and God filled their mouth with laughter. It's interesting because their patriarch, Isaac, his name meant laughter. When God gave Abraham that promised seed and God promised it, what was the first thing that Abraham and Sarah did? They laughed. One in disbelief and one in belief. And God said, I'm going to name his, I'm going to give his name laughter. And God built that people, that home in laughter. God fills his people's heart with laughter. As evil, listen to me, as evil and as wicked as the world has become, it is a sad place. This world is pursuing pleasure, it's pursuing laughter, and it never finds it. You know why? Because listen to me very carefully. Laughter is a gift from God. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. One man said, let laughter flood your home and its echoes will last a lifetime. Humor is a way to acknowledge human frailty. It says, here's what humor says. I'm not okay, you're not okay, and that's okay. People who are secure, people who are secure in their awareness of God's love, people who have experienced God's forgiveness are free to laugh. Let me tell you something. I wake up every day, and here's what I quote. This is the, this is the first thing I say is I say this. I say, I've, I've, I've just learned to do this. I wake up in the morning, and in my heart, I just say, Father. There's a reason for that. I want to remind me who he is. And I will remind me who I am. And I say, Father, what love you have bestowed upon us that I should be called a son of God. <laughs> what a family I'm in. Now listen, you got to get up and be happy. I'm a child of God. I'm going into a world today that my father owns. I went up, I went up and I took some widow, the widows from Mississippi. I took them up yesterday, yesterday afternoon. Uh, we left out, we left down here about two o'clock, rode up to Rocky Mountain National Park, went in about three. And I just stood there and they marveled. They're Mississippi and they're all 80 almost. And we're at 10,500 feet and they can't breathe. And I thought this was not a good idea. And I'm like, did you guys see that? They're like, is there a tunnel? <laughs> I see light. <laughs> no, don't go to the light. Get in the car. Uh, but, but man, they just marveled at that. And I thought about this while I was there yesterday. My father owns this. He made this. What a beautiful place. And we ought, to be, we ought to be able to be happy in this world. God's people ought to be a happy people. You know what, you know what was said of Jesus? You know what some people think? Some people think that Jesus was some pale recluse with a big dinner plate behind his head. And he walked around just faithfully doing his duty, been angry about it, condemning everybody. You know what the Bible said of him? The Bible said of Jesus, thou hast anointed him with the oil of gladness above all his fellows. He was the happiest guy. And by the way, can I tell you how I know he was happy? Children loved him. They crawled up in his lap. They put their little arms around his neck. They loved him. You know who didn't like him? The Pharisees. They didn't like him. They didn't like him at all because he was happy. You know what they called him? They said he's a wine bibber and a glutton. You know why? He went to parties. He went to weddings. He went where people were gathering, and he went to those fellowships, and he talked with them. Now, listen, he never sinned. In fact, he, tried to re he rescued those that were in sin. But Jesus, Jesus was a man who wept and he laughed and he was happy. The Bible tells us he had the oil of gladness. When you look at Jesus, he was just glad. You know what Jesus said of Calvary? 
You know what he said about Calvary? Psalm 118, Messianic Psalm. Looking at Calvary, Jesus said this. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's a psalm of Messianic Psalm. That's what Jesus approached Calvary with. And it was proven for us in Hebrews when the Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. Jesus, Jesus did not shirk from the cross. He embraced it. He rejoiced in the day that God had made for him. Listen, I don't know that I have that kind of spirituality to be able to rejoice on crucifixion day, but Jesus did. Now, let me tell you what Satan wants you to do. Satan wants you to be out of balance. And he does this all the time. He tries to distort things. He gets some Christians thinking that we ought to just party all the time. And we make the Christian life a playground. Some Christians want to fight over every detail of the of the Christian life, and they want to make church battleground. So some, they see it as a battleground. We're in the fight, brother. We're fighting for the faith. We're going to fight about everything. Others are like, hey, anything goes, man. Whatever you feel, like, whatever you want to do, do it. So you got some that's the playground, some that's the battleground. But with God, the Christian life is holy ground. It's a place where men meet God. And men who meet God are people who have a joy about them that the world doesn't have. Now, what does all that have to do with our kids? Well, the Christian home ought to be a happy home. And if we're going to have a happy home, we're going to have to make time to be happy. And we're going to have to make a plan to be happy. Uh, let, me, let me make this statement. Leisure is not a luxury. It's a necessity. Uh, the word leisure comes from the Latin word, which means permission. You need to take time to make happy moments with your family without feeling guilty because you need it and God wants you to have it. I can promise you there was a time early on in my ministry that when I was going to take my family off and we were going to go somewhere, I had times of guilt, like, man, I should be in the office. I should be doing that. So-and-so's in the hospital. You know what I realized? There's always going to be somebody in the hospital. There's always going to be a shut-in that needs to be visited. And I can't do everything and be everywhere. And I've got a family for a short time, and I've got to make sure that I give some time to them when I can. And i got to make time for that. If you have children, you need to throw away your excuses about not having money and not having time. Listen, you can, you can make time, and you don't have to have money to have fun. That's a lie, and the devil just wants to make us have an excuse. Well, I don't have money. You know, they get to go to Disney World. I can't do that. Kids don't want Disney World. Kids don't want, listen, kids don't want travel ball. Parents are spending all this money to take their kids from pillar to post everywhere, all day, all weekend. They're going to play this game, that game. This. You know what kids want? They want to play catch with dad in the backyard. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 4 says, there is a time to weep and there is a time to laugh. Let me ask you a question. Do you take time to laugh? Do you take time to laugh? Uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 21, blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. And the Lord said, look, I'm going to put you in seasons of weeping. I'm going to put you in seasons of laughing. I'll tell you this, the seasons of laughing will keep you through those seasons of weeping, and the seasons of weeping will make you appreciate those seasons of laughing. God wants us to be balanced. Satan wants us out of balance. So here's what you need to do and why it's important for us to create a happy home. And this is why, this is why tonight happiness is so tied to spirituality. It, don't think of this as being an unspiritual thing. This is essential to spirituality. I'll tell you why. What we're going to learn from our passage of scripture right here in verse number two, watch this very carefully. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Number one, fun with your family refreshes. Let's all say it together. Ready? Fun with your family refreshes. It's refreshing. Watch what he says here. He said, you labor and then you eat. So we work and we eat. And the, so you know what happens? The labor of our hands refreshes us. The work gives us food. The food refreshes us from the work. Look over at Psalm 127. Look, look, look back one psalm. Psalm 127. 
Verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. The man who is more interested in family finances than fun is a man who will, who will wreck the spirit of his home. Because he's always worried about how much money we don't have. Well, look, if you've got kids, you're broke. You're broke. And the Dave Ramseys of the world, and I appreciate Dave Ramsey. I appreciate his getting out of debt, staying out of debt, manage your money, be a good steward, all of that. But can I tell you, some, some of that stuff can get you so tunnel visioned on having money that it sucks all the life out of you. And we live in this world of pressure, 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 and we forget, you know, that God really is the one that takes care of us. And I'm not saying that we throw caution to the wind to become bad stewards, but I'm just telling you, if making a living means that you can't have a life, you're not doing it right. There is a time to work. There's a time to rest. It's refreshing. It's better to love rich and to live rich than to die rich. It's better to love rich and to live rich than to die rich. There was an old mill owner, became a very prosperous owner of a great mill, great business. He came to his preacher one day and he said, preacher, let me tell you with my business, I found the gold. But I... I lost the rainbow. Listen to this article. Years ago, remember, remember, remember years ago before Facebook when everybody was sending all these little things through email chains? Remember that? On the, on the new World Wide Web? Everybody remember that? Well, when I was pastor, everybody in Mississippi realized, hey, we got the internet on computers now. And they found that, you know, the World Wide Web and they started sending out these email chains. And one came across my desk and uh, I found it interesting, and I, I printed it out, and I want to read it to you. It's just, it takes about two minutes. I want you to read this. I want you to listen to this. It's going to be a lot of little, uh, almost bumper sticker sayings, but I want you to hear them. I don't know who the, I don't know, the article was not, did not have a name, so I can't credit it, but it's not mine. I want you to hear it. The, the author said this, we have, today we have taller buildings, but shorter tempers. Wider freeways, but more narrow viewpoints. We spend more, but have less. We buy more, but enjoy it less. We have bigger houses, but smaller families. More conveniences, but less time. We have more degrees, but less common sense. More knowledge, less judgment. More experts, more problems. More medicine, less health. We spend too recklessly. We laugh too little, we drive too fast, we get angry too quickly, we stay up too late, we get too tired, we read too seldom, we watch too much TV, and we pray too seldom. We have multiplied our possessions, but we reduced our values. We talk too much, we love too seldom, we lie too often. We have learned how to make a living, but not a life. We've added years to life, but not life to our years. We've built more computers to hold more information, to produce more copiers or copies than ever, but have less communication. We have become long on quantity, short on quality. These are times of world peace, but domestic warfare. More leisure, less fun. More kinds of food, but less nutrition. These are days of two incomes and more divorce. Of fancier houses, but broken homes. It's a time when there is much in the show window and nothing in the stock room. Isn't that true? And I'll tell you what we need is we need to have some more happiness where we are. Family fun refreshes us. Let me say number two. Family fun repairs. It repairs. Look at verse two. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. There's the, there's the, there's the uh, replenishing there. Refreshing. Now watch this. Happy shalt thou be and it shall be well 
with V. God puts wellness with happiness. Why is that? Because it's a principle all through the scripture. Hey, you get your Bible for just a minute. We got about two, we got two or three more minutes, and I want to close this out. Look over at Proverbs chapter 12. I want, I want you to just walk through three passages of scripture in Proverbs with me right now, and let's look at some wisdom. Proverbs are God's view, God's thinking about life. Watch, watch chapter 12 and verse 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. You got people stooped over today. They need a good word to make it glad. Look over at chapter, look over at chapter 17 and verse 22. 17 and verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Look at the health benefit here. A merry heart's medicine. A broken spirit, a broken spirit affects you physically. Look at, look at chapter 15 and verse 13. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. You know, can I tell you something? Sometimes what we forget is that what's coming out of our mouth is feeding our heart. We're eating our words while we're speaking them. And if we're talking about foolish things that always discourage us, we're always going to be discouraged. You want to be encouraged, talk about things that will encourage you. He said, the mouth, the foolish mouth feedeth on foolishness. Now watch verse number, watch, watch verse number 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil. Evil meaning injurious. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. He's always eating what he's talking, and he's talking about merry things. I've often said, uh, weak minds talk about people. Good minds talk about things. Strong minds talk about ideas. If you find yourself always sitting around just talking about other people, that's a weak mind. Uh, what we talk about feeds our spirit, feeds our soul. What's talked about in your home? Who's doing the talking in the home? Is it the TV? Is it social media? Uh, who's doing the talking in the home? Broken spirits take the spark out of life. And... Um, they just leave a shell of a person. And there's so much stress today. There's so much stress. Can I tell you, our kids are stressed today. Today we have ulcers, high blood pressure, migraine, headache, stroke, cancer, all these. And by the way, these are all symptoms of stress. They're not all caused by stress. But doctors will tell you that we increase the probability by stress. You know, the day's going to come. I mean, I get migraines from time to time. And I'll tell you, a lot of times it's stress. Uh, I'm going to get sick and die one day, and and uh, and and it may not have been caused by stress, but it can be it can be increased by stress, can it? We can have we can have we live in a stressful world. We got to learn to to deal with it. Learn to cast our cares upon the Lord. Now we're all going to get sick. We're all going to go through struggles and trials. But even in that, you can have a merry heart. But our attitudes control our emotions, and our emotions directly affect health. This is one of the things that I just stood back and marveled at Shelly Cruz. Because even on her sickest day, she'd come in to practice piano before the service, and we may say, you, but she always had the merry heart, joyfully going about serving Jesus, even with a sick body, but a merry heart. And that's a feast. We get to feed on that. And by the way, she had a choice. She could have made life totally miserable for her, her husband and for her kids and for her church and everybody else. But she didn't. We're, we're all going to go through trials and troubles, but we, just, we get to choose how we do it. I don't, have to, I don't always get to choose what I'm going to go through, but I can choose how I go through it. I mean, I can go through the car wash mad because my kids got something all over my car. Or I can go through the car wash and, you know, have a blast with the kids. I mean, how many of you ever took your kids to the car wash and had a, had a blast? I remember one time, man, I had, <laughs> I had one of my kids in the car. We were going through the car wash, and they were, 
had their face against the window. I can't remember which girl it was. Had their face against the window, and I rolled the window down for a second. <laughs> and I rolled it back up. <laughs> but man, we can we can have we can have fun. Emotions directly listen. Attitudes control emotions, and emotions directly affect our health. In World War II, in of course in Germany, there were a ton of orphans because of that war. And I don't know whether they should have done this or not, but they did it. They took, they took some orphans and they put them into a study. Took 100 orphans in Germany. They put 50 in this orphanage and 50 in that orphanage. And they gave every one of these kids in this or orphanage everything they needed physically. All their clothes, all their food, all their bedding, everything that they needed for physical needs. But then they came in with workers and they spent time one-on-one -on -one with the kids. They touched them physically. They laughed together. They went on little field trips. They had fun in that, in that, in that orphanage. The other orphanage, they gave the kids the exact same things, all the clothes, all the food, all the bedding, everything. The conditions were identical, except there was no human interaction. And after two years, they brought all the kids in, they did studies on that, and the kids in the other orphanage averaged two inches taller, fatter, fairer, healthier. These kids were more sickly, more prone to disease, simply because there was no happiness. They had all their physical needs, but no happiness. Laughter affects every vital organ. Laughter releases tension. And laughter is a gift from God. It is a gift from the Lord. Do you know that man is the only creature that can do three things? Man is the only creature on the planet that can weep, can blush, and can laugh. Uh, I'm done tonight, but listen, uh, I got a lot more to say about that, but we're going to stop. We got to go to prayer and uh, we need to pray. But, you know, you can make everything fun. I, I remember, you know, sometimes people ask, you know, we didn't get we didn't we didn't get paranoid in our home over family devotions. We didn't have revival every night, but we, you know, we prayed with the kids every night and, and we'd have we'd have family devotions. We try to have family devotions most nights of the week. And, and sometimes what we would do is we'd go through, we'd go through times where we'd say, okay, Brianna was left-handed. So I went through, she was the only one in our family left-handed. So I went through the Bible and they did a study on all the left-handed people in the Bible. You know, there's a lot of them. So here's what we did for our family devotion. We said, okay, Brianna, tonight you're going to be a guy by the name of Ehud. Okay? So come here. I gave her a little dagger. Not a real one, but I gave her a dagger. Showed her how to put it, and I tied it on her. And then I went over to Deanna, and I said, Deanna, come here. Tonight, you get to be a guy named Eglon. And I stuffed her full of pillows, and I got all kinds of stuff in there. And I said, you're going to just, I said, you, you, tonight during family devotions, you get to eat donuts. And, man, she was happy about that. She got to sit up on that chair, and she's eating donuts, and she's big old Eglon. And, uh, and, and so Brianna came in, and Brianna said to Juju, who was the guard, and she's just little. She said, hey, I want to speak to the king alone. I got a gift to give him. And Juju's like, okay. And she left the room. And Brianna kind of sauntered over there. And uh, she's talking to old King Eglon. And then she got the poor dagger. Whoosh, <laughs> stuck it in Deanna. And she loved that. <laughs> Deanna was patted, though. And then Deanna fell over. And, uh, and, and, and. You know, she made all kinds of noises and racket. And I was trying to, I could not figure a way to help the dirt come out. You know, the Bible said the dirt came out. Her bowels gushed out or whatever. We couldn't figure that part out. But you know what? You know, I can promise you this. I bet you all those girls remember that story of Ehud and Eglon. And we took, we took the left-handed people and we acted them out. I remember one time we got, we, Juju was Goliath. And I put Juju on my shoulders. I put a big old towel or a sheet over it. And Juju was the, and I was the legs, and I came walking in, and Juju was trying to make big noises of Goliath. And uh, Deanna got to be David, knock him down and cut her head off. And, and, uh, and man, we had all kinds of fun. You know, but the Bible didn't have to just be like, well, yeah, thou shalt not, and thou shalt. You know, when, whenever the Bible says thou shalt not, you know what God's saying? God's saying don't get hurt. Whenever the Bible says thou shalt, the Lord is saying help yourself to happiness. This is how to be happy. Boy, we Christians can make it.
We can make it, we can make it pretty rough, can't we? <laughs> you know, we did learn. There's joy in serving Jesus. Just watch me. I don't know why the pastor's doing that. Be happy like me. <laughs> We're good Christians. We're always miserable. That's not the way it should be. That's not the way it should be. We, we gotta, our, our kids need to grow up realizing that, man, serving the Lord is happy. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. All right, let's go to prayer. I'm going to give you um, a couple things real quick. Brother Theron Stallings is going on a missions trip. And so let's pray for him. He travels to uh, the Dominican Republic August the 20th through the 27th. So pray for uh, his health and travel and then ministry opportunities. They go with the chiro chiropractors. They give people adjustments in their backs and hopefully adjustments in their heart. And uh, so we're going to pray for that. Continue to pray for Ann Burroughs as she's home recovering. Pray for Corky Cooper um, as she's recovering. And then tonight, I was just reminded that we, we have... Uh, some folks who are homebound, not necessarily shut-ins, but just not able to get out, who sometimes in a, in a time of transition as a pastor, you don't, you don't get to learn who those people are. And so we got a host of them. And so let's make sure we pray for them. If you know somebody that I need to know or meet, make sure I know them so I can meet them and pray with them and, and uh, encourage them. But let's make sure we're visiting them and following up on folks who are out. And, uh, and then pray for, um, pray for those who are in discipleship. we got a number of them tonight. And uh, we want to continue to pray for them. All right. Anybody over here with a prayer request? Okay. Middle section here. Pastor, yes. If we can pray for our missionary, Josh, too. Um, their son, Logan, is in the hospital. It's his second time in the hospital. He's been sick for a while. And um, he's vomiting every day. He's dehydrated. Mm. So if you can pray for them. Yep. Logan. Let's pray for Logan Booth. And uh, missionary Josh Booth, pray for them tonight, okay? All right. Uh, anyone else in this section? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. We, I just, yeah. Yeah, and it's so expensive. I just got an email from him yesterday. So let's, let's pray for them. And, and we, you know, we've tried to help send some relief, and it's just hard to get it to them in time. We have to go through all kinds of other channels to do it. All right, anybody else over here? Anybody prayer request? Yes, absolutely. Unspoken. How many else would say, I have an unspoken request? I have an unspoken request. Okay. All right, the Lord knows that. All right, anybody over here? Okay. Let's take about... Uh, 10 minutes and break with your family and pray. If you, if you have some, if you're by yourself, um, look for somebody, introduce yourself. And again, if you're new to our prayer meeting, you don't have to pray out loud. If you're, if you're new to that, you don't have to pray with, uh, but let someone pray with you, maybe share a prayer request with them. And uh, let's spend a few minutes in prayer and then we're going to have our, our, uh, our business meeting to follow. And we got one item, so it'll be in and out. Okay. All right, let's go to prayer.